We're here with Tiger Woods. Um, now, uh, Tiger, you're one of the great golfers of all time, but also a great popularizer of golfers, mm. of, of golf. And uh, another man who is, who is known for that, is, of course, is mm. Arnold Palmer. Here's a photo of you of Arnold together. <laughs> and uh, a lot of members of Arnie's Army here, and Arnold Palmer just passed away. Mm. Um, was, he, was he an important figure for you? Did you, did you learn much from him? Oh, my God. I, he was one of my, one of my heroes. And uh, we became great friends. I got a chance to win his golf tournament a, a few times, and to have him come as I came off the green, have him give me a, a great bear hug um, is something that is will always be special. To see that photo of Arnold on the, on the green, uh, just chit chat, and that's how it was. I mean, we were just we were always needling each other. I mean, pretty hard, which is which is a lot of fun. So um, I understand I'm, when you were an amateur. Friend. When you were an amateur, he actually took you to lunch once. Okay, so when I was at, at Stanford, yeah. um, he invited me to come over to Silverado, which is at where the Safeway was, and have dinner with them. So I go to dinner, and we have a great steak dinner, and I, I pick his brain a little bit, and I, I leave. Well, my coach finds out, says, you know, did you pick up the tab? I, it's Arnold Palmer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a college student. It's Arnold Palmer. Uh, so he says, well, I don't know about this. So he, he calls into NC2As. They deem me ineligible uh, because... It, I don't know, whatever it was. So I had to write You're Arnold Palmer. I'm ineligible as, a, as an amateur because Arnold at that Palmer moment, bought yes. you a steak. I had to write a check to Arnold Palmer for $25. <laughs> I was at El Paso for the All American. And until the check cleared, he had to cash the check, send a fax copy to the NC2As, and then I was eligible to go ahead and compete in the All American. Wow. Wow. It's not that strict anymore, I'm guessing. It's changed since then a little bit. <laughs> Well, um, this is the 20th anniversary of the Tiger Woods Foundation. Yeah. What was the uh, original mission of the Tiger Woods Foundation, and, and, and how's it grown? Well, the, the initially, the impetus was to try and get more participation in the game of golf. And we tried to do that with junior, junior golf clinics around the country. Mm -hmm. And when 9-11 happened, and I drove home on the 13th from St. Louis, um, if, I was, if, I was, if I died in, in, in that, that that tragic day, what would the foundation look like? Well, we wouldn't have anything because uh, we didn't have anything bricks and mortars. We didn't have anything that was tangible. It was just a traveling circus of junior golf clinics. So I went to my dad and I said, Dad, we need to change this. And, and he said, what do you have in mind? I said, we need to create something as tangible, something real, something kids that can call their own. Well, a week later, I come to my dad. I said, Dad, I got an idea. Why don't we come up with a learning center? And he says, OK. So I gave my dad the directive. He comes back. About about 10 days later, and says, okay, I got a deal. Why don't we create this learning center at Dad Miller where I played high school golf at? And lo and behold, you know, we create this learning center of 50,000 square feet. And my dad got a chance to actually see it, be a part of it, and feel it uh, while there were kids in it. Or kids weren't in it, and then kids were in it. I was wheelchairing them around. He passes about a year later. And then I, about two months ago, I bring my son Charlie to it. Mm -hmm. And so to have that, that type of family atmosphere, to have you know, my dad there and now my son there, it's been incredible. Now, I, I know that your father was an enormous uh, mentor and influence for you. And you know, when, when fathers pass, we lose their voice. Have you been able to recreate that voice internally for yourself to still have that guidance even though he's gone? I do, because it's the same thing. He always says, get out of it what you put into it. If you work hard, you're going to get results. But if you don't, you're not going to get them. But more importantly, you don't deserve it because you didn't go out there and earn it. And so that's why I practice so hard. That's why I work so hard is because I still hear my dad's voice each and every day. I, each and every day, I think about my, my old man. Well, um, you have <laughs> you've had the great privilege. You've had the great privilege of golfing with quite a few presidents. Can I do a little rapid fire round right here? I'll name some presidents you've played with and you give me your impression, okay? As a golfer, okay? Uh, George H.W. Bush. Fast. Fast? Fast. Fast golfer. Good Plays golfer? Fast. Plays fast. Yes, he's very good. We play under about two hours. Okay. Uh, Clinton? Lots of cuts. <laughs> a lot of cuts at the ball or cutting corners? Cuts. 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 All right, all right. I'll get you a lawyer present before you answer that again. W? W. Bush? No, no, not yet. Ever play with no, him? No, no. Okay. Obama? Uh, straight. Straight? Straight. He's very competitive, right? Extremely competitive, hits it straight. 
Hits it straight. At hard? Long? Hard to hit it crooked when you hit it. Not long ish. Not long ish. Okay. <laughs> what about, okay, what about uh, Trump? Did you ever play with Trump? He said presidents. Okay. The Tiger Woods Foundation is celebrating its 20th anniversary. Tiger Woods, everybody. We'll be right back with Elijah Wood.